Hello, my astrology friends and family from around the world. Today we are back with the exceptional, incredible one and only Ruman Kolev, the person who single-handedly revived ancient Babylonian astrology. He taught himself the ancient languages so he can translate the clay tablets <laughs> and ancient scripts from Latin, from ancient Greek, from ancient Arabic, Ak Akkadian. And today he's back with another one of his incredible achievements and contributions to the world of astrology. Uh, the primary directions were lost to humanities for a few hundred years because they were too difficult to calculate. And that was the main method that the ancients and astrologers of the kings and uh, <clears throat> were using to determine, to predict the most precise predictive method. And Ruman Kolev revived it back into astrology by recreating the algorithms. He even studied high mathematics in Washington University. So he can recreate that. And he's going to talk to us about primary direction, the most precise method for prediction. And if, if you see anywhere primary directions on a software, it's because Ruman Kolev revived them and gave the calculations to that. Hello, Ruman. Hello, Lada. Nice to see you again. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Actually, I first uh, found out about you from my teacher through primary directions, because that's what she used mostly to predict. And that's how we got connected. And I'm so excited that you are finally going to teach this to our audience. Ruman Golet is starting a course on primary directions. He is, as I said, the father of primary directions, the, the, the current modern father. And he will teach you everything he discovered about this method of prediction, starting from July the 20th, approximately. We're thinking once per week for six weeks, that will be uh, 36 hours, six by six is 36. <laughs> six weeks, six hours uh, uh, every time. And you would find out everything about primary directions. Can you tell us, Ruman? What is primary directions? Uh, primary directions, <laughs> uh, they are something very simple, actually. Uh, the basis of the primary directions are the time fractals. And um, this is uh, the correspondence of one smaller time fractal to a bigger time fractal. Fractal. So we all know about the progressions, right? One day after birth equals to one year. So this is example of correspondence between time fractals. And uh, the time fractals are um, a complete cycle, a complete cycle. Every time fractal that corresponds to another time fractal is a complete cycle. Um, and every cycle is the same in its uh, basic laws, in, in its uh, uh, structure, and uh, in its development. So this simple correspondence are the primary directions. However, they are uh, what the public knows about them is that they are something very, very complex. <laughs> involving a lot of mathematics, a lot of trigonometry, uh, and so on. Uh, so yes, they are complex if you try, if you are crazy enough to try to compute them by hand, right? So yes, uh, in, this, uh, in this way, uh, they are uh, extremely complex. Uh, and especially if you don't have uh, an algorithm to do it, um, or, or if the algorithms uh, are not good. Uh, when, when I started uh, researching the primary directions, uh, then actually nobody around me knew them. They, well, there were books about this, in English, in German, even in Bulgarian, in Russian. Uh, however, uh, when uh, I was looking for a living astrologer who 
has a mastery over the primary directions, I could not find anyone, not only in Bulgaria, but in the whole world. And after some very serious uh, search, I found one, one guy. And, and he was uh, a crazy guy. Uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, Jerry Makransky is uh, his name. He is American by birth, uh, but uh, he lives uh, he lived in uh, Guatemala. Uh, mm -hmm. So he has uh, finished uh, mathematics, I think, in Philadelphia. Well, you, you know, uh, such such kind of people are have such kind of crazy biography too. So uh, he had uh, written a book about uh, the primary directions, um, but uh, but this was way after I actually uh, learned the primary directions. And after, um, this was actually the time when I was looking for a computer program. So the story goes like when I was back in Bulgaria and I was in the high school and I was in this uh, secret societies, you know, of astrologers which were forbidden in these times and and many people had big, big problems with the Bulgarian KGB. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, in these times, uh, these astrologers that I knew here in uh, Bulgaria, uh, they only whispered about the primary directions, how good they are, how exact they are, but nobody had mastery over them. And, um, uh, then uh, it was like uh, I dedicated quite, quite time, actually. Uh, I started um, serious work when I was in the medical university. I was 20 something. So um, in, some, <clears throat> in some point um, of time, then I studied at the University of Washington in Seattle. Mathematics too, uh, one of my uh, uh, fields there. Uh, so actually in one point of time, I understood it. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, there was nobody around to help me because nobody around knew and understood them. So uh, by reading the books that were around, I read uh, books in German and in uh, English uh, about the primary directions, uh, maybe about seven, eight books from different authors. And, uh, you know, Sefarial has a book, uh, uh, Karl Brander Pracht has a book, um, uh, Eric Kür, uh, these are German astrologers from this uh, golden times of astrology in the like the first half of uh, the 20th century in germany uh, so uh alan leo alan leo has one book about uh, uh, i think it, it was called the the progressive horoscope and, and and there he has a chapter about the primary directions uh so this kind of different books that i read and I tried to understand them and it was not easy, of course, not easy only by books alone without help of living person. It was very difficult, but in the end, I got the neck of them, I understood them. And, uh, and then when I understood them, I understood something, something else. I uh, realized that actually many of these books, including by, by famous authors, uh, the way that they were written about the primary directions, I realized that these authors did not understand them. Some of them, some of them. Uh, Alan Leo understood them. Yeah, he maybe what he wrote about the primary directions is maybe one of the one of the best uh, books that that I have read. Definitely, he he uh, did have an 
understanding, but but some but some other authors didn't. So it it was this kind of mess um, about the primary directions. They were forgotten after the Second World War. Nobody knew them. Nobody got an understanding, and no, and nobody used them. Uh, it was uh, interesting when I went to the United States. Uh, I studied at the University of Washington, then at the University of California at Los Angeles. And in these times, um, I I said to myself, "Hey, right now there are computer programs for for astrology. Maybe I should find a computer program for for primary directions." And and I was looking around for, for such a program, and I did find one which was uh, advertised that it computed them. I paid uh, uh, huge money for this program without hesitation, and I got the program, and, <laughs> and it actually turned out that uh, these uh, things were not primary directions. There was something else, something which was concocted by the author of the program. You know, he just made some kind by right ascension, some kind of computation, then transform it to the ecliptical coordinates. It's it's a pure, uh, you know, uh, absolute uh, incorrect uh, things. So uh, then I looked for for more, and I couldn't find. So then I said, okay, then what? What should I do? I will write my own computer program myself. So I hired I hired several people in Bulgaria. This was the time of the recession in Bulgaria. The average salary in Bulgaria was down to fifty dollars. Uh, then it dropped down even to five dollars in some period of time. In this time, I hired uh several guys and i paid them big money for bulgarian for bulgarian standards this was a fortune <laughs> so <laughs> so i paid them big money and i wrote down exactly step by step what to do boom 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 uh and they worked for me maybe for uh one year i was in the uh, united states then i moved back to bulgaria and when I saw what they had done, I just was absolutely shocked, shocked. Because, you know, these guys, they were good programmers, but they lacked understanding. They lacked enthusiasm. They were not astrologers. And they had made such a mess, such a mess, that I decided to hire them for a second. Well, first, I fired them. <laughs> and, and and then I hired them again, but this time not like programmers, but like gurus of programming for me. So you, they taught you how to program so you can make it yourself. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I hired them as teachers. I paid them big bucks and they taught me and I was like every day we were working maybe for six hours uh on a row you know the guru here in programming and time programming and he's looking at oh this here you you should fix this this and this was every day and after six months i was absolutely ready to uh program myself actually this is my my strategy when i study something uh i uh look around for uh, the best guru teacher that I can find in the subject. Uh, I, I hire the guru or the guresk. I pay big money and I learn fast and, and you know, all the time. So this is uh, how I studied uh, ancient Greek, uh, how I studied Latin, uh, Arabic, um, all these things. Uh, I have studied them with private gurus, with private teachers. And so, now people uh, have an option as well to study with you if they want to learn primary directions. 
And, and can I ask you, yes. are they yes. like, how precise are they for prediction, primary directions? So, but Lada, Lada, we have not touched, uh, we got on a tangent again, it is easy uh, with you to get on uh, a tangent, but we forgot to talk about what are the primary directions actually. I, I, okay, I said you that this is one fractal of time to another fractal of time, all right, this is okay, but more specifically, uh, <coughs> this is the turning of the celestial sphere of the whole three dimensional celestial sphere and its turning is the basis of the primary directions. And uh, uh, actually <laughs> of these primary directions, which are historical and which are known in, uh, in the astrological circles, uh, this, this kind of primary directions, they equate four minutes of time to one year of life. Four is that minutes. If your time of birth is four minutes wrong, you're one year off with your prediction. <laughs> uh, on the average, it is uh, the primary directions are uh, complex because there are many, many different kinds. And the primary directions, which are of points to the horizon or to the meridian, yes, for them, this is true. Four minutes, one year. Four minutes error in your birth time, one year error in the prognosis. But this is only for these directions. Mm, there, are, there are primary directions where one minute, rather, one minute error is in the birth time, is one minute, uh, is one year error in the prognosis. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and there are, and there are other primary directions where even if you change uh, the birth time with one hour or two hours even, they will not move much. Maybe with uh, sometimes they will move like several months, sometimes one year or only. So th th these are all different types of primary directions and uh, points to the horizon and to the meridian, they are the most simple ones. And I'll give you example. For example, somebody is born right now, right here, okay? And after, let's say, uh, after two hours, exactly like after 120 minutes jupiter rises on the horizon 120 minutes after the birth of this person so what we do 120 we divide by four minutes we get how much lot 120 years. by four 60 years no, 30. no, 30. 30, 30, 30 years, <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at the age of 30, so, something Jupiterian will happen in the life of this person. Absolutely, absolutely. When Jupiter hits the horizon, the eastern horizon, the western horizon, the meridian, uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's very, very powerful. Success. Mm -hmm um success and um like uh in the social status uh, a very big uh, rising and uh, everything is easy so yeah so it's uh, it is that simple but these are only the directions to the horizon and to the meridian like you you just look uh, how many minutes after after the birth a given planet or a given point on the ecliptic or on the celestial sphere comes on the horizon or on the meridian. You mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just look how many minutes after the birth. Yeah. Then you, by this key, four minutes equal one year, mm -hmm. you look the, uh, and there is a reason why four minutes are equal to one year. Actually uh, in the, in the more uh, widespread uh, knowledge about the primary 
directions among the people and even the authors of some books, they say that, uh, that this is one degree, one year. One degree, one year, right? But by this, they mean one equatorial degree, not, not a degree on the ecliptic or something else. They mean one equatorial degree and one equatorial degree is actually uh, a measure of time, not so much of angle. Well, actually also of angle, but it's more a measure of time and it is four minutes. And there is a reason why, why is this so? But uh, we will talk about this, about the different time, time fractals and, and ladder. Take in account that these directions, four minutes equals one year, are only this uh, kind of uh, how to name them, like the uh, the um, uh, the primary directions per se, or the slowest primary directions, which were practiced. Four minutes, one year, one degree equatorial one one year but in fact this is only one of the many many time fractals there are there are other primary directions which equate different time measures so yeah yeah wow and and i know that uh that's the best way to calculate your to your exact time of birth basically was a called rectification with primary directions yes because and this is this is so because of the time sensitivity of the primary directions because if you as i told you <laughs> that there are primary directions only one minute change will change the uh the heat date with one year so because of this high time sensitivity, that's why they are so so good for rectification and, and not only because of the time sensitivity, but also because of their efficiency. They are efficient, they are effective. They are probably the most effective, um, effective uh, and powerful tool for astrological prognosis. It was uh, employed by the ancient Astrologers, uh, the first uh, uh, known to me evidence is in uh, Dorotheus from, I think he was the first century AD, very, very early. Uh, but, uh, but actually uh, the basis of the primary directions, I mean uh, the mathematical um, tools for computing them were available in Babylon, somewhere in the in the new Babylonian kingdom, somewhere in the fifth, sixth uh, century BC, uh, or or even earlier, these tools were available so, because they could compute uh, by the by which star is on the meridian. They could compute uh, what is rising on the horizon. They had they had such tables actually in my in my book the babylonian astrolabe i uh, discuss one such table uh, which i call uh, the first table of houses so the first table of houses was in babylon from the 6th century bc and uh, this is in this uh, text uh, uh, lbat uh, i think 1499 uh, i am uh, discussing this uh, this text uh, in my book uh, the babylonian uh, astrolabe so you can find the book uh, and uh, and uh, yeah basically they had these mathematical tools for this and i suppose that uh, that they may have used it for charts of which they had the exact birth time and and also they had clocks they had water clocks with which to measure the time. Mm -hmm. So everything was there. You know, when, when they say that uh, the, 
the Babylonian astrology is not horoscopic because there were no ascendant. Uh, they are wrong. They are very, very wrong. Uh, first, first, because this is absolutely insane, you know, knowing the mindset of the Babylonians, it is absolutely insane to believe that it meant nothing for them if a child was born when Jupiter was rising from the Eastern horizon and a child born when Saturn is rising on the Eastern horizon. You, know? you must be absolute idiot to believe that, that this meant nothing for the Babylonians. Of course, this meant everything for the Babylonians, everything. And I have even proof for this, but I must look in some more text, you know, because uh, right now I'm uh, doing a lot of work uh, in, uh, in Arabic manuscripts attributed to, uh, to Hermes. I didn't have time to look at uh, the cuneiform text uh, so much. <coughs> however, however, a lot of um, this uh, study of the Arabic terminology in astrology uh, helped me actually re real <laughs> realize something very, very big. Like uh, there was one cuneiform text translated by Abraham Zaks. Abraham Zaks is one of the, you know, one of the big, big heavyweight uh, Assyriologists in the, from the middle of the last century. He did a, a lot of work. Mm, so he translated one very, very interesting uh, cuneiform text, which was saying, when a planet is in the Talu, this will happen. When Jupiter is in the Talu, this will happen. When uh, Venus is in the Talu, this will happen, and so, and so on with all the planets. And then he goes like, when a planet is in the, I think the term was Mishir or something like, like, like this. Uh, this will happen when Venus is in the mission. This will when Jupiter is in the mission. This will happen. So uh, he was tra he translated this text. However, he said he wrote in his article he didn't know what means Tau and what means Mishir and what means everything else. Like uh, the only thing that he knew is that everybody knows, uh, looking at this text, that it it uh, it. Uh, it goes for uh, for planets in some positions, but whether these positions are on the zodiac, whether they are helical positions, or whether they are, you know, uh, in relation to the horizon and the meridian, he he doesn't say, and he doesn't know. And you know what? I say these guys must be crazy. You know, these these guys must be absolutely crazy because Tau, you know, Tau, there uh, there is the same absolutely the same word in the terminology of Arabic astrology, and and Tau means rise on the eastern horizon. Mm -hmm. so, you see, and look, Arabic and Akkadian, they are very, very similar languages. They are from the same family. And most of these uh, scholars who uh, work in the Assyriology, they know very well Arabic. Uh, most of them knew very well Arabic, which helped them actually, you know, also learn Akkadian. These are very, very similar languages. These are like Spanish and Italian. And uh, and it is just uh, very, very, I, I cannot understand this kind of uh, missing, you know, that, that this guy could not figure out uh, that this same word is also in the Arabic language and means rise on the Eastern horizon. But I need more time, I need more cuneiform text to do my good job. <laughs> So, so going about, back to primary this. directions, can you give us an example? How they like do you have like on your to show on your screen or something? Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, <clears throat> let me first look. I, I, uh, I have, I have a book about this. Okay. Wait a minute. So, 
I have I have published uh, a book about this. Let me share the screen. Okay. Uh, let me see where did I put it here. Yeah, uh, this is for example uh, part one of my book on primary directions. This is part two. In the first one is uh, directions to the meridian and to the horizon. Then this uh, the interplanetary directions, and then this is the directions by Reggio Montanus. So um, here and Reggio Montanus actually. I have translated also his uh, one of his manuscripts, which was the horoscope of the Maximilian I emperor. Uh, he made this, uh, he uh, <clears throat> wrote this when, when Maximilian was a baby. Uh, so he used heavily primary directions there, heavily. Uh, and uh, here I give a lot of examples uh, with uh, Adolf Hitler and with Kennedy. Uh, these are two main examples that I do in my in in this uh, in these books about primary uh, directions. But um, I have looked also in. Uh, of course, I have looked in in thousands of charts of primary directions. Uh, and um, just uh, today, uh, I looked into the primary directions of our one of our favorite subject. Uh, Monsieur Erdogan, um, the president of uh, uh, Turkey, Turkey, uh, and um, I found some uh, very, very good, uh, uh, good uh, points there. So let me let me see where is his chart here. Okay, okay. Now let me share the screen. Uh, share the screen, okay. Now, this is the chart of uh, the president of Turkey, Erdogan. And uh, here, this is my computer program, uh, Plaza uh, the 7. As you know, it's, uh, it, it has uh, many, many models about primary directions. We will uh, use this program in the, in the class in the webinar. Uh, so here we can see the primary directions of planets to the horizon and to the meridian. And um, for example, if I look here, let me see, like, uh, you know, probably, you know, probably that, uh, that Erdogan, Mm, he 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 had some trouble. Uh, you know this this guy. Uh, this guy had a big trouble somewhere in nineteen ninety in nineteen ninety eight. He was several months in prison. Uh, I think about four months in uh, prison for for uh, I think. Uh, because he he wrote he quoted some kind of or his or he himself wrote no he or he quoted some kind of Islamic um, verses of a poetry in some important event and um, and he was prosecuted uh, for for this and he landed in prison Erdogan. In 1998. So, uh, what what happens after that? After that, in the in the in the spring, let me see. Yeah, in in March. Now uh, he got a lot of after that. He got a lot of pop popularity. His power increased. And in March 2003, he won the elections. However, however, he could not become a prime minister because of this uh, prison term. 
So even before the elections, because his uh, power has increased so much in the Turkish society, in December, in December 2002, which was three, four months before the elections, in December 2002, anticipating what the results will be, the constitutional, I think, uh, judges decided to do some changes so that people in his case could become primary uh, prime ministers. So this, this kind of uh, constitutional um, change was made in December 2002. And then only after several months, he won the elections. And in May, again, several months after this uh, December 2002, uh, in May 2003, he became a prime minister. So let's look what is happening here. Let's look what is happening. Look here. Here we have, if we look here, we have Mundo directions, which is, which are the bodies of the planets, the physical bodies. And zodiacal are uh, the projections of the planets on the ecliptic. So these are two different points. Which and are more move, correct. <laughs> Well, in some people are the mundo, in other are the zodiacal, but in almost in everybody, both of them are strong. Uh, I think the mundo seems to be more powerful, uh, but the zodiacal also, especially in some in some people also. So uh, let's look. Okay, we have here mundo. We have here because there are, there are also different keys for transformation of the time arc into years of life. You know, like uh, the the most used and the, the most simple is the the key of Ptolemy. Here it is PT, which is Ptolemy. The key of Ptolemy is like um, uh, one degree one equatorial degree equals to one year of life. The most, the most simple here is description of the key. So, okay, we, we use Ptolemy. Usually I use Ptolemy or Nibut, one of them, or both actually. I will explain in the webinar how we can use all of the keys to, to make a chart actually of the influence of a primary direction. So, okay. Uh, here we use Ptolemy, and when we look at the moon directions, look what we got here. Jupiter to the descendant to the western horizon, December 2002. So, uh, mm -hmm. and this is this is when he became a prime minister especially this time, because you see these primary directions to a planet, to horizon or to meridian, um, they have a period of influence, like um, maybe plus minus six months, mm -hmm. sometimes more, you know, but the bulk, the, uh, the heavyweight of the influence it's like plus, plus minus six months around the primary directions. For the moon or the sun, it can be more. It can, because they are, they are disks, you know, they are not points. Uh, so uh, Jupiter hitting the Western horizon in December, 2002, it's just uh, like uh, the rocket takes off and takes Erdogan to the stratosphere of power. Yeah. And, and um, I see that some so of the, the primary direction says C, another one says D. Ones are direct when they are uh, directed directly, and others you can direct them backwards, converse. Yes, yes. Uh, D uh, is direct, which means with the movement of the celestial sphere, yeah. and C is for converse, which is 
Um, Won't the direct uh, ones be more correct? Because they're like future rather than going back? Yes. You see, I uh, practically, practically, I have not seen any practical big difference between direct and conversed. Um, both of them are very efficient and very powerful. So basically, Maybe, like if you're born right now, but let's say 80 minutes ago, Jupiter was setting or rising again in your 30th year. Uh, well, you said 80, uh, sorry, 80 uh, minutes? Uh, not 80, but 120 minutes ago or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yes. Back and yes. forth from the Absolutely. moment of birth. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, there must be some metaphysical difference. The converse may come from some karma from from uh, past lives. Uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah, um, of course, this this may be uh, the case. If uh, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, practically they are uh, both are very very powerful. So uh, well, that's what we see here in two thousand two. Uh, another thing is here, you see here Mars, Mars to the ascendant in November 2012. And uh, and this is a time actually I made a, a research and I found something interesting here. Like, um, okay, let me see. Where was that in the in two thousand? That that he had a trouble. He had some trouble in two thousand thirteen. In two thousand thirteen, he had some trouble about uh, there were demonstrations. It was somewhere here, but where where was it? Well, anyway, anyway, he was uh, in trouble then. Um, and there was more serious trouble for Erdogan in 2008. Okay, let's see, where is this 2008? Uh, okay, look here, 2008, all right. Okay, uh, in March 2008, there was a, a case that called for the dismantling, for the dismantling of his party and even banning Erdogan from political life. So this was a very trying time, 2008. And let's look at the primary relations here. In 2008, because look, he, he has, Saturn here up in the sky, okay, uh, and his Saturn is 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 quite powerful. Let's look in in his, at his Babylonian chart for a moment, just just to have it uh, here on the on the record. Here is this is his Babylonian chart. I can switch to the Ptolemaic Ptolemaic uh, tropical ecliptic and now Babylonian. Ecliptic is uh, is this here? So Saturn is uh, high in the sky, very very important planet for him. And let's see what makes Saturn with his sun. So if I go here, these are conjunctions and the positions of the sun. And I look here, what I see. In 2008, the sun opposition with Saturn. Here, this falls in December. And he had trouble the whole year, actually, 2008. But this is, uh, this is about uh, such kind of directions with the sun or the moon. They are like plus minus one year periods, and the event can unfold when some other astrological indications support 
mm -hmm. the primary derivatives. Like some transit triggering it after that. Transit, eclipses, different other types of primary directions, progressions, uh, many, many different uh, uh, types of uh, astrological techniques. Did, so, did he also uh, say that he went to prison in 1990, 1988, around that time? In 1998, 1998. Oh. Oh. yeah, in 1998, he went, wow. he went to prison and here we, we have this here. Saturn opposition the sun. Wow. So you see, these are like two, two uh, directions, like oppositions between the Saturn and the sun. However, in the first case, which is Saturn direct to opposition of the sun, we are moving Saturn. Mm -hmm. Saturn is what we move with the, with the uh, celestial sphere. And in the second case, we are moving the sun with yeah. the celestial sphere. So the first case was uh, much more serious than uh, the second one. But, uh, but you see in the second one, which uh, was in 2008, first the sun, when the sun is the promiser and, and hits Saturn with a position, it is not so heavy. Mm -hmm. as if Saturn hits you, you know, like when, you know, it is different when, uh, when, uh, uh, when you rather hit somebody and when Mike Tyson hits somebody, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> there, there is difference. Is, so now so, you explain uh, a lot, for example, you know, people are only looking at transits and they're saying, well, Saturn transited my son, nothing bad happened, you know, maybe I was a bit depressed, maybe I had some issues. Uh, but if you're also having primary direction around that year of Saturn, then this can smash you, the Saturn transit sun. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, only, only the transits cannot do serious events if they are not supported by other techniques, by progressions, by perfections, by primary directions, by, by heliacal events. Uh, so when many, many astrological techniques for prognosis coincide in one moment, and when they are uh, pointing to the same event, then it's almost certain that the event will happen. Okay, so right. That, for, yeah. for example, you uh, you have for example uh, Jupiter conjunct the Sun in primary directions. You have uh, in heliacal uh, the so-called heliacal transit, uh, Jupiter heliacally rising from your ascendant, and uh, okay, you have then also. Uh, Jupiter transiting of uh, your moon or your MC, then, you know, all these different uh, prognosis techniques with Jupiter hitting in one time will definitely give a uh, powerful event, powerful event. So um, these are, uh, yeah, also you see, also the fact that that this direction here, the, the, the second one in 2008 was not so killing as the first one uh, is because, okay, it happens in 2008 and Jupiter, the Jupiter was in 2002, which is like six years. Well, this is not much six years in a, in a primary direction, you know, take in account ladder that this direction, Jupiter to, uh, to an angle, this happens only twice in the human life, mm -hmm. only twice. So we have here Jupiter to the IC in 74 and Jupiter to the descendant in 2002 and that's it, no more, no more. Uh, so that's why this kind of, um, of technique 
primary directions to the horizon and to the meridian are so powerful and that's why their effect lasts for so long actually there is a school in uh, astrology and and even ptolemy was uh, one of these guys so, you know at, who adhered to this school they said that <clears throat> when a planet hits by primary direction your horizon for example then the effect the effect of this lasts until another planet hits the horizon oh so it's like it's setting a vibration that lasts for you for a long time till the next hit. so here yeah so, so here yeah give us we have example. jupiter to the descendant which is the horizon or uh, if it is like uh, axis one of the axes either horizon or, or meridian we have the next one of a visible planet the moon in 2008 yeah in 2008 so so we can say that this direction of Jupiter to the descendant lasted uh, its prime influence was around 2002 when Erdogan became a, uh, a prime minister, but then it lasted with full force until 2008 when, mm -hmm. when the moon hit the uh, horizon. Can this also explain so, why some people go on a long streak of bad luck? For example, I have people write to me and they say, since 2008, my life has been going just down, down and no, no help, no, you know, because there is nothing. Maybe they had a difficult primary direction to an angle and a new one has not come to change the energy to indicate the shift. Yes, yes. Uh, also here we have uh, we have also a lot of we must take care also of the um, of the um, the periods of of the planetary of the planetary periods too. Uh, you see, because uh, um, also the helical the helical periods. So Jupiter, Jupiter has a period of about uh, 12 uh, years, all right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so when did this guy, Erdogan, became a president? I think this happened in 2014. Yes, in 2014, all right? So uh, let me find you again, Lada. Okay, here you go. So in 2014, Mr. Erdogan became a president. Mm -hmm. Does this ring a bell? Jupiter hit the descendant in 2002. So what is the helical period of Jupiter? 12 years. Mm -hmm. 12 years so 2002 plus 12 boom Erdogan president so cycles <laughs> thank you well that's fascinating I guess that's a great presentation to have people dip their toes into primary directions I know I've checked mine and I remember when uh, I had first Jupiter on the descendant setting and then Saturn. And uh, when Jupiter was on my descendant, I divorced, but married uh, and I had first child when Saturn was, no, sorry, something like that. No, Jupiter on the descendant, I got married first time. And then Saturn on the descendant, I got married second time, much happier marriage, but because my Saturn is much better <laughs> placed on <than> Jupiter, <laughs> something like that. But it was very, something really that stood out to me. Yes, uh, another thing uh, to say a lot here is uh, important to know that the primary directions uh, are of many, many kinds. Uh, and there are many different systems. Like, okay, Ptolemy is one system, but there, but also we have uh, the system of uh, Hermes, mm -hmm. uh, or what is attributed uh, to Hermes. Okay, 
So also we have here the system of radio montanos. Oh, okay. So you can radio montanos. And which one? So you... William, <laughs> William Lilly, William Lilly, directed in the system of radio montanos. Right? But do they give very so big we differences? Have... Oh, yes, yes. Between the radio montanos and uh, uh, like these three systems, Ptolemy, Hermes, and the radio montanos, there are big differences between them. So what? Uh, so uh, so uh, you see. So we're gonna learn so, all those different ones? Of course, of course, we have, I hope we will have plenty of time. Uh, you know, the only directions which are the same in all systems are the directions of points, planets uh, or something else to the horizon or to the meridian. They are the same in all, in Hermes, in Ptolemy, in Regomatos, Campanos, topocentric, uh, we have uh, some modern systems too. We have the system of Cure. You have the system of uh, the topocentric. Uh, we have uh, the primary directions of Koch. You know, uh, these are like uh, directions which were invented, so to say, in uh, somewhere in the beginning, the middle of the last century, like 70 years uh, ago. Mm -hmm. I myself have ideas about other types of primary directions for which I we, we will be talking. For example, look, I will tell you, for example, right now about one kind of uh, idea that I have, how to uh, implement the primary directions. Uh, like um, this, this principle, one, like uh, this uh, one. four minutes. Yeah. Or yeah, let, well, let's say four minutes equals one year, right? This principle is the principle about the timing of the primary directions and the turning of the celestial sphere. Very good. However, however, this is not only geometry and trigonometry and spheres in computer models. The real life is much, much richer. So when we talk about every four minutes after the birth equals one year of life, we are talking Lada, of everything that happens within these four minutes. You know, for example, uh, 120 years, uh, uh, 120 minutes, 120 minutes after your birth, which correspond to 30 years of life, okay. Uh, maybe nothing will happen on the sky, but... but um, that's exactly what I was going to ask you, because I was thinking maybe, you know, maybe there was, there was fireworks in the neighborhood, <laughs> you know, something. Yeah, like yes, yes. I mean, maybe 120 minutes after your birth, imagine, uh, imagine that, uh, uh what what could have happened in this birthplace storm uh, let's, let's storm or electricity stopped or something <laughs> well i was thinking about something positive <laughs> to figure out something positive negatives are are so easy to figure out uh well okay let's aha i figured it out okay imagine you're born ladder okay and 120 minutes after your birth the door of uh, of that room where you you have been born uh, kicks open, and uh, somebody from the personal comes with a lot of flowers and a lot of sweets and say, "Hey guys, you know today is my happiest day. I'm getting married, and you know here you go." Uh, so, will this be of importance? Of course, of course, Lala. Everything is of importance, everything. And I'll give you example. It would be good also. to speak to your mother uh, to, to know what, you know, if anything. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, what has happened. You know, when they put cameras everywhere, you know, and they film everything, then we can go and-, and Exactly. <laughs> That's the future minutes. of astrology. <laughs> That's one reason yeah. I don't mind total surveillance because of this. <laughs> yes, total surveillance, so good, let's do it. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Ruman. Let's, uh, I hope, uh, you know, I hope we can start at around 20th of July if we get the right number of people. But yeah, it, who can take this course? Any, what kind of astrology do you need to know? Anyone, anyone, anyone who has the burning desire to learn this most ancient and uh, uh, most efficient and uh, absolutely amazing technique is welcome, welcome. If they don't understand anything, I will explain this to them in one second. Thank you so much, Ruman. So even if you don't know, you, you just need to know the names of the planets, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just you know, just uh, to have IQ above thirty. So not not to be a complete idiot, you know, but a little bit above this or better, you know, and to know the simple uh, three 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 times rule, which is like, all right, uh, the proportion, to know this rule for the proportion, you know? You oh, know this- right. And plus, if people don't rule, want to take the whole course, they can buy course by, co I mean, uh, week by week. They can try the first week if they think it's their thing and- Yeah. Take yes, the whole course, yes. there is a discount. So yeah, you can buy separately each week. Yes. If you want, so thank you so much, Roman. You see, Lala, we we will talk about about principles, about visualization, about uh, what they mean actually on the sky, and not uh, we will not talk about tangents and uh, mathematical formulas and this and that. No, no. Oh, thanks God. So anybody <laughs> will do good. Anybody who has this uh, desire to learn this will be okay wonderful thank you so much Ruman, and looking forward to this course myself and if yes, anyone Lala. wants a yes, reading Lala. with Ruman, he also offers readings using primary directions i'll put the link below for his profile thank you so much <laughs>